Kia ora All Saints, it's Guy here with you this week and I'm so excited about the opportunity to share with you and launch our new series around the parables that Jesus told as he was going along in his ministry with his disciples. Uh, not, I, I guess as a way of, of really unpacking like what it was that Jesus was talking about and why he was sharing in parables, but also what does that mean for us as a community of believers and what it looks like for us as we unpack together uh, the, the concept and the, and the uh, understanding of who we are as authentic community. Of course, that's the theme that we've been working through this year as a community, not just from a sort of wonderful, lovely, thematic, like this would be a good thing to do, but what does it mean for us as an authentic community of Jesus followers and how do we play that out in our lives together and so that other people can see by your love they will know that you are my disciples. And so this is just one way for us to say, hey, let's go back to really what it was that Jesus was saying and unpack that together. And so we're really, really excited. We're going to go across the course of seven or eight weeks, uh, of course, across August and September. And, and in that, we will wrap Mission Month. Uh, and we, of course, can unpack some of the parables that Jesus spoke of that, that sort of sent us out or, or sort of look more towards being missional to others. And so I'm really, really excited. Uh, if we go before we go any further, why don't we unpack and look at what the passage is that we're reading through uh, this week together? So, uh, the reading for this morning, as we launch off into this parable series, is from the book of Matthew, chapter thirteen, verses ten through seventeen, and it says this: The disciples came to him and asked, "Why do you speak to the people in parables?" And he replied. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Uh, though hearing, they do not hear or understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but not ever, un but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And so as we come to uh, our discipleship groups this morning, whether you're uh, in church or whether you're in your house church or your missional community or your prayer group, wherever you are, let us start to unpack what is it that Jesus was doing and why was he telling parables? What even is a parable? you know maybe it's pretty familiar to you and you've been around church for a long time or, ma or maybe you're super new to this church gig or, or this who is even a Jesus character and what is a parable and so let me lay it out for you really Jesus as he was walking along and as he met with people he would often share what we now know as a, a parable which is really um, a whole bunch of of short fictional stories often almost like a riddle or, or a puzzle. They were, they were sort of really puzzling and people would often kind of go on one side like, oh, whoa, that's so cool. And on the other side, they'd be like, oh, what do you think he means there? Surely he doesn't mean what I think he means. And so they really had this kind of almost riddle or puzzle to it where people couldn't, they either kind of grasped the concept of really what Jesus was saying or they didn't and they really had a hard time. You know, I think there's this beautiful subtext that Jesus is hinting at here and it's true for all of us and it has been since the dawn of time and it is this, that we are terrible listeners. We are awful at it. I mean, look at yourself. I can imagine if I asked the, whoever you are out there, do you struggle with listening? I imagine you're probably sitting there going, yeah, guy, I do. And hey, I'm the first to put my hand up that I, some for a lot of the time, am a terrible listener. I think I'm getting better at it, but listening's really tough. Whether you just want to input or you want to tell your own story or 
you know, to be honest, you're thinking about something else. Um, you know, there's a sense that within our humanness, we are really terrible at it. And I think that the reality here is that uh, as Jesus was telling short, puzzling, fictional stories, they forced the people to listen. They forced the people to do some thinking. They forced us to listen and to think. L let me tell you this and unpack it so maybe you can resonate a little bit with me. I live with my wife and uh, three flatmates, um, also known as my children. Uh, and, you know, Quinn 9, Nora 7, Addison 5. You can imagine, it's pretty full noise in our house. And I love it. I wouldn't swap it for anything. Uh, although maybe a nice holiday every now and again without them. But hey, that's another story. But day to day, our house is pretty carnage. And there's a lot of action and there's a lot of things. We've got after school activities, we've got arts and crafts, we've got Lego, we've got everything. The house ends up sometimes looking like an absolute bomb. Summer works, uh, we co vicar together and she also has a private practice. Uh, and so Thursday and a Friday, she will often come home from work 5.30, 6 o'clock. And by then the kids are right through trying to get dinner sorted and the house is an absolute wreck. You know, to be honest, kids can be pretty physically uh, draining and pretty emotionally draining. Like, love them to bits, but there's just this element of truth that it's hard work. So anyway, you know, we're trying to tidy the playroom and we're trying to get the Lego tidied up and kids do your chores and this and that. And, and Summer will often come home and, and want to unpack how the day was. You know, like, tell me what's going on or she'll tell me a story about her day. Uh, you know, something that she found a little bit difficult or whatever. And she'll be talking away at me and I'll be going, mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. Completely understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, phew, yeah. Oh, phew. you must be exhausted. Yeah, totally. And, you know, like she's looking at me and I'm pretty sure that she can uh, read right through me. Uh, and, you know, but there's a real reality that I'm looking at her and I'm doing all the right things and I'm totally active listening and I am affirming and I'm kind of going, yeah, I totally get it until she gets to a question. And then I'm like, sorry, love. I uh, and I got a couple of options. I can either pretend or I can actually say, hold on a minute, scrub back about 30 or 40 seconds or maybe hang on a minute, let's go back two minutes and I can really own it. And I think you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, I, I know how that works. I know. <laughs> I think it happens much more for me and my inability to listen than it does for summer. To listen to me but hey that's a whole nother story about our marriage but anyway we uh, <laughs> I have trouble listening we as a people have trouble listening and I think that there's a reality that if we just own it and say hey you know what like I sometimes really struggle we can actually go back and we can say hey let's try to unpack that together and you know what I think that Jesus knew that we sucked at listening. Now, we found it really tough. That as a people, we found it really tough. Whether you were a first, living in the first century or whether you were living in the 21st century, it was hard. And so let me go and unpack this a little bit for us. When we say that Jesus was telling short fictional stories for his followers to listen to, and there was a message in it, what was the message? What was he wanting people to listen to? And of course, what we can do is we can open up our Bibles and we can scrub back through our Bibles ever so slightly and have a look at exactly what it was that Jesus was saying. And we don't have to go too far. And if you have your Bible open at Matthew chapter 13, stick your finger in it and we can kind of scrub back a little bit. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. And it says this. From, the time, from that time on, and this is just as Jesus starts to preach, it says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. That's what Jesus was saying. Repent, believe that the kingdom of heaven has come near. And of course, if we keep scrubbing along a little bit and we go to uh, chapter 4, verse 23, it says this, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. So when Jesus is telling parables, he is proclaiming that the kingdom of God has come near. The arrival of the kingdom, 
God's kingdom, his redemption for the world has come through Jesus. That is what he is saying when he is telling parables. So it's with that lens that we should approach these parables of Jesus, that Jesus is saying, hey, wake up, listen, because when I speak, I'm letting you know that the kingdom is coming and, and here's, how we, here's how we get that. Here's what that looks like. Of course, these are not just a series of moral tales. These are not just we get to cherry pick it and it tells us how we live our lives and what you need to do in order to be better or what you need to do in order to obtain more of God. That is not what we are about. We are not about working our way towards God because the gift of grace is free. We, we, just, we just come to God by, by believing and then when we realize the great gift that has been given to us, it is at that point that we have this manifestation of how we want to lay our lives down. But these parables offer us a sense of God's kingdom coming before us. You know, something is happening in the world as Jesus shares these stories. Among, amongst his, amidst his arrival in the world, something is happening. The kingdom is coming, Jesus says, not Notice he doesn't say that the kingdom is going, that you will go to somewhere else. That is true when our earthly bodies die. We go and we can spend that with God as he, as he comes to redeem the world. But there's an essence that we are, the kingdom is coming. It's almost like uh, people identify that there was this old world and then there's this new world that sort of, sort of sits almost parallel to each other and they, they don't touch and you go from the old one to the new one. But I think there's an essence that God is coming into his world. And so actually the old world and the new world order that, that Jesus brings, that God brings with Jesus, actually they sort of overlap, so to speak. I'm trying to use my hands here, but you can get the essence of almost like a Venn, like two circles overlapping. And so the new kingdom is entering into the old one and Jesus is trying to help his people understand how that looks and how that works uh, amidst kind of their thought process and what they've read of old prophets. Uh, and so we get this sense that, you know, God's taking his world back through Jesus. They've got these invading, this overlapping world that's starting to flourish you know, discover for yourself uh, Jesus and what it looks like to inhabit these two worlds. You go from the old and suddenly there's this new world that's opened up to you through with power and healing and freedom and deliverance from the captivity of the world and things that keep us bound in, in, in slavery. We are set free from that. You know, this passage today that I read is, is trapped in the middle of, really, this beautiful parable, this beautiful short fictional story that Jesus tells about the sower. And Emily shared it last week, and I encourage you this week too to uh, have a look at it around this topic. We will pick it up again in a few weeks, so hence I'm not unpacking it in full here. But what did Jesus is asking you to do as you hear these short stories is for you, it's to draw you in. He's asking you to come in and to think for yourself. Whether you hate him and, and you think that he is rebelling against us, so he is a, a heretic, or he, you, whether you hate him, or whether you love him, and you, and you think he is all that he says he is, you can be drawn in and intrigued by what is being said, and that is what Jesus is after here. We have this group of people who are listening, where he, others, there's, the others in this story are those who love him, and they have seen his healing and they have seen all that he is doing. And they are sitting there and, and they hear the invitation of the story. They've been drawn in and they hear that invitation and they have, been, they have an open mind to what Jesus is saying. And they say, we are really receiving what you are saying. And then you have the people on the other side who, who this is for them reaffirming their rejection of Jesus. And they're saying, this is exactly who we thought he was and we want nothing to do with it. But what we realize is these puzzling stories that Jesus tells 
They invite you in. They invite you to think about yourself and who you are and the way that you interact with the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus is doing is he's putting the ball in your court. Okay, he's, he's putting it in your hands to decide what to do with. And there's an element of that that not everyone's going to get it. You know, in verse 10 of our reading, it says, you know, he, uh, the disciples came, why do you speak to the people in parables? And then he goes on and he talks about it because this is the kingdom of heaven, but not everybody will understand it. And then, of course, he goes straight in to the scripture from Isaiah. He is pulling from their knowledge and their resources about what the prophet said about the way that people would interact with the kingdom of heaven. Though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not understand. But if they did, they would be set free, they would be healed, I would heal them. And then Jesus really, he says, he says to them, you have seen, you have heard, please keep your mind open, you are there, you are on the way, this is what you are seeing, please keep going. There's a sense that in the crowd that is listening, there is a them. They talk about a, a them in the crowd. And, and Je- in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Jesus says. And that's the people with different motives. We are seeing that some are hearing and some are not. Some are open and more, the, the, the invitation, they invite you in. The more, the more they listen, the more they're invited in. The, the open mind allows them to, to go in deeper. And those who are closed, it reinforces the narrative that they have already put up against Jesus. And here's a beautiful kicker, I think, that's, that's really powerful about the way that Jesus is interacting with us in this moment, is that he is not going to play the role that you want him to play in this scenario. We want him to tell us what to do. We want it plain and clear. And he's not doing it. He's saying, You do the work. You open your mind and you have a think about it. Taking the parable of the sower, where has the good news landed in your life? Has it been choked out? Has it sprung up quickly and and been stifled by the weeds? Uh, Has it sown into good soil and it's flourished and it's flourishing in your life? Think for yourself. Where are you in the story. You're following. You are seeing. You are trying. That is what he says to the disciples, and it is true of us. We are here. We're in the room together. You are discussing this together. We are keeping our minds open to what God is doing. Jesus knows how hard it is to listen. And we are being asked here to cultivate a habit of open mind of open ears, never thinking along the way that we know it all, because there's a sense that the minute we get comfortable, we're not listening. And so may as we come to this series, this this next few weeks about these parables that Jesus spoke to us, these short fictional stories, these puzzling, riddling stories that we sometimes wonder, oh, that's for someone else, or who am I? May we be open-minded. May we remember that the reason Jesus was sharing these stories was to share that the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe that the kingdom of God has come near and that he went around sharing the good news and healing all sorts of sickness and disease. That is what Jesus was about. And that is what he is about today. And just like the disciples, we are being invited in to think, how do we interact with the kingdom of God? What is the good news for us? Be of open mind. Be of open ears. How are these short, puzzling stories leading us closer to the kingdom of God? You are all amazing. I am proud of each and every one of you as you continue to push and pull each other closer to Jesus. Please dig deep today. Go go wondrously deep with one another. But keep it simple. It's not hard. The good news is freedom, liberation, and unity with Christ, and it is a free gift. And so as we come this morning, Lord God, I pray that you would be with each and every one of us. 
open our minds and our hearts to what you are saying to us. And may we seek to go on that journey together so that as we lay our lives down for our friends, they too might know that the kingdom of God has come near to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. See you later. Bye.